Well, welcome to another podcast from School of Surgery. I'm John Lund, and I'm here with again with um, Dr. Rajiv Singh, who's a consultant radiologist uh, in Derby and uh, one of my colleagues. Uh, today, we're going to talk about CT colonography, uh, which is a uh, one of the newer ways of imaging imaging the bowel. So, thanks very much for coming uh, to talk to us, Rajiv. Hi, John. Um, so, uh, CT colonography uh, wasn't around when I was a medical student, but um, is a big player now. Yeah, John, um, as you said, it's one of the uh, new ways of um, imaging the large bowel. Um, it's also called virtual colonoscopy because we get uh, reconstructions uh, using the computer software where you could get images like colonoscopy, optical colonoscopy, and you can have a fly-through view through the colon, yeah. um, also called CT pneumocolon because you use either room air or now more um, um, more more of the centers are using the carbon dioxide, which obviously is quite uh, good for patients because it doesn't give um, bends because of nitrogen in the room okay. air, and also you get better distension of the um, large bowel. Mm -hmm. um, it's like you said, it's non-invasive uh, and it's evolving technique, uh, which is very good in detecting colonic pathologies such as polyps or obvious cancers, but also we get information about the extra colonic mm. uh, pathologies. Yeah. So in a nutshell then, so um, you, it, it's basically a CT through all of the abdomen in fine slices and those slices are reconstructed by the computer to be able to give us as if we were flying through the bowel or you can look at these things in 2D and we'll come on to that later. That's correct. And instead of giving people barium or barium and air, the air itself is used as the contrast. So air's injected introduced through the anus into the into the colon and rectum which is then distended and you can get great views of the wall as the, as the walls come apart. Yes, um, like in barium enema or double contrast barium enema we use barium as one contrast and air as the second contrast. Here we use uh, air or carbon dioxide to give the contrast and distension of the bowel and uh, uh, centres use um, in symptomatic patients, um, intravenous contrast, obviously, to see the uh, extra colonic abnormalities yeah. better. Yeah, and that's the other advantage of other things is that you can see outside the bowel. So if you've got someone with weight loss, for instance, and a bit of change in bowel habits, you might think, well, I want to look at their bowels, but also I'm interested in their exactly. ovaries and the liver, and I wonder why else they've got weight loss. So yes. it gets, it's so just to, just to, this is uh, one example. So on the uh, left of the screen, this is a view on traditional or conventional optical colonoscopy. Uh -huh. And you can see there is this polyp uh, uh, based or situated on the colonic fold. Yeah, so there's a stalk sort of going up and to the right. Yeah. There. And this is the virtual colonoscopic view uh -huh. where you can see the stalk there. And that's the polyp. Um, quite good. Yeah. So how, how big is that polyp, just to give us an idea? Um, you can measure them either on this view with the software yeah. or obviously, like you said, 2D or 3D views. Yeah. And I think this one was about uh, 10, 12 millimetres. Okay, so, you know, uh, not tiny, but not enormous either. So it's pretty good yeah. resolution. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how, why, why use CT colonoscopy or CT pneumocolon or virtual colonoscopy? They're all the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah. they're all the same thing, but different names for it. Yeah. So the common indications are um, failed colonoscopy. Yeah. The optical colonoscopy, obviously, the standard, um, but there are times when either because of very torturous bowel or other, say, like Marfan syndrome or someone on warfarin, yeah. and if you... Oh, Bad bowel prep. You can't do it then. Painful for the patient, discomfort. Yeah. Um, a lesion you might stop passing uh, passing through. Um, elderly people that aren't going to like colonoscopy very much. And and, and the colon, and the sequel intubation rate, uh, the target is 90%. And so mm. we, we expect even the best colonoscopists to fail 5 to 10% to yeah. get around all the time. So there's a very definite need for this. So we have got a role there. And uh, you can see some of these, like a nice, um, uh, in, uh, which has done some meta-analysis of uh, quite a few studies, yeah. and shows that sensitivity for 10 millimeter or larger polyps is 88%, which is quite good. Um, it's getting better with the newer techniques, newer softwares, and uh, specificity 10 millimeter or more than 95%, so it's quite good. Yeah, and, and that's important, because the larger the polyp, the more chance there is it. 
to yeah. actually contain the cancer or becoming malignant over over time, isn't it? So um, we'll talk about um, some safety issues. So you do colonoscopy, uh, and there are issues like perforations mm -hmm. and complications of colonoscopy. We have got that as well, but it's not as common mm. so there are only six or seven cases uh, reported in literature of mm. perforation so it's, it's pretty rare um, another study looked at it and they pref the patient's uh, choice and they preferred CT colonoscopy as compared to say barium enema we have completely stopped doing barium enemas mm. in, in our center yeah. and lots of other centers I know that the CT colonography is their yeah. kind of uh, test of and, uh, and barium enema pretty outmoded now misses about 10% of significant lesions. Yes, yeah. and, and even the polyps like pickup rate is about 50-60%, so uh, this is clearly the better test. Um, we all know whether you do colonoscopy, barium enema, or CT colonography, uh, the, the, the thing which patients hate is bowel preparation. Mm. Uh, no one wants to be sitting on the toilet no, for 24 hours. Good book and a pair of running shoes. That's, that's what you right. need. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we need to do that in order to, whether it's colonoscopy or virtual colonoscopy, we need clean colon. Yeah. Um, so initially, uh, and some centers still use Picolex or stronger laxatives to clean the bowel, we have moved on to something called minimal bowel preparation. We use gastrographin, 100 mils, um, 24 hours yeah. before. And gastrographin is a war-soluble contrast agent. That's right. It? And it's to, and I normally put our patients on um, low residue diet for 48 hours. 24 hours before the test, they get 50 mils gastrographin in the morning and 50 mils tea time. Mm. Um, it does give diarrhea as well, sometimes little, sometimes more. But whatever is left in the colon is nicely tagged with gastrographin, mm. which you can... On the reporting, when you're reporting it, you can you can exclude the tagged fecal residue. And, and by tagged, tell us what you mean by tagged. Tagged is a, the gastrograph in high density, iodine con containing contrast. Yeah. It, it basically mixes with the fecal residue. Yeah. So anything like polyp or lesion, it will show up as a filling defect there. Right. So um, and that's the advantage of it. Uh, and because it doesn't give diarrhea, diarrhea, okay. uh, it's more liked by the patients. Yeah. So particularly in, your, in a frail elderly population where you want to investigate their bowel, then it's, it's, it's very well received and probably by most people in the end, I suppose, no one likes bowel prep, as you say. Yeah, there's also this concept coming of electronic um, cleansing of the bowel, by which I mean that software can then delete all the tagged fecal residue or high density uh, completely de deleted from the colon and you can virtually have a clean colon right so that's that's the advantage watch, or this, next, watch this space watch the space here is um, an example of um, a fly-through view of the colon which mm -hmm. is created by the computer so this is a 3d reconstruction in, in when on the computer you can start at the anus and fly up the colon virtually yes and and this is the Conventional 2D, which radiologists yeah. are obviously trained to look at these images, and uh, and you can you can have this and this view and plus 3D like coronal and sagittal views. Yeah. So we'll talk about how we do it and a couple of examples as well. Okay. The, the the most important thing again about the colonic study is that distension. Distension mm -hmm. is the key yeah. because if we don't distend it, a spasm can look mm. like cancer or you can't be sure whether it's yeah. spasm. So you get some luminal narrowing and it's actually spasm and nothing significant. Yeah. It's difficult to tell. That's right. So what we do in CT colonoscopy, patient arrives in the department, they have a very flexible small tube mm -hmm. uh, which is inserted correctly and then automated insufflator very gently introduces carbon dioxide and uh, a, a, a liter and a half or two liters uh, when gone in you get nice distension and supine view, we get first a scout view, or you see how much the bowel is distended, yeah. if you've got good distension. And then in symptomatic patient, we give intravenous contrast and do a um, scan through the um, top of the uh, abdomen mm -hmm. to the pubic symphysis, and then turn the patient prone, mm -hmm. and you can you do the same, same kind of slices mm -hmm. again. And they are reconstructed, and the images are produced. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you have got very tortuous bowel or you can't get nice distended bowel on supine prone, you might need to do the lateral views or decubitus views. Mm. Mm.
Okay, and and are the patients finding this comfortable or uncomfortable having a litre and a half, two litres of carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is uh, is very well tolerated actually yeah. because it doesn't give similar kind of a dis- kind of a bends or pain mm. or discomfort mm. as the normal room air will. Um, most of the patients find a bit bloated, uh, but as soon as you to finish off the test because carbon dioxide is easily soluble in blood it gets absorbed very quickly as well and you just breathe it out yeah so that we, we've gone over to using carbon dioxide for regular colonoscopy as well with big improvements in patient comfort excellent yeah a uh, couple of examples why we need to do supine and prone views yeah. Yeah. Uh, here you can see this is a prone view and yeah. a little bit of um, Fluid so the, the fluid's not on the ceiling, it's not defined gravity, the patient's prone. That's, yeah. that's prone, yeah. yeah. And you can see this wall here looks nice and clean yeah. and very difficult to see what's happening there. You turn the patient under the view and you, you encounter this lesion there. Yeah. So you need to see both sides of the wall yeah. uh, of the colon and hence you need to do... And that's tumour, is it? That's tumour, yeah. 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 So you want to miss that. Yeah, and uh, this is what we used to use uh, before. Picolex, which to, to clean the bowel, and this is a rectal catheter, but now it's completely changed, so we go automated in stuff later and yeah, gastrographin. Yeah. The bowel preps are available. <laughs> yeah. um, data acquis- acquisition, we have talked about it. Um, we use 64 slice CT scanner. Um, um, uh, what does that mean then, 64 slice CT scanner? 64 scan? slice is that uh, these are quite fast scanners, mm. and in one spin around the body, they can create 64 cuts of the body basically but uh, it is slightly complicated that not only the tube and the the detectors are turning around the patient the patient is moving in the scanner Mm. as well Mm. so you get a volume acquisition Mm. um, um, and then CT images are reconstructed with the help of the computer on 1.25 millimeter thick sections with Mm. one millimeter gap Mm. and uh, then you have got the axial views or transverse sections you've got coronal or front to back yeah. and then sagittal or lateral view and obviously the fly and the, and, and the computer reconstructs those from all those cross sections it's taken yeah so the volume it has acquired yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there is always a talk about radiation issues mm. so there are studies which have looked at the radiation exposure in barium enema and this and there's not much difference between the CT colonography and barium enema Obviously, when you compare with colonoscopy, no radiation. Mm. And uh, then it comes to, once the images have been taken, it comes to radiologists, obviously, to, to do the reporting. Uh, there are two different ways of reporting. Some people prefer reporting initially from 2D data, which is axial views and coronal views. Um, we are trained as radiologists to look at the axial views. Mm. Um, more and more people now. And just for everybody, so axial is, is the cross sectional slice. The transverse. Like you cuts, take yeah. the big sword and cut someone in half across ways. Yeah. Um, uh, but now, now the, the trend is becoming more and more that people look at the fly through views quickly. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you see any anything which looks abnormal, you just tag it. Yeah. And then you can start going back to all those, and then you look at your 2D images or cross sectional imaging to make up your diagnosis whether this is uh, this is false or this is true polyp, this is true lesion. Mm. But both are acceptable views um, to whether you want a okay. 2D or. But the way you've been trained, you most look at 2D at the moment, but the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's personal preference yeah. as well. Um, this is what I showed you uh, earlier. So that's the lesion posteriorly in yeah. the rectum and this is the fly through this the snapshot of fly through yeah. so so there you go you get an ulcer with a rolled edge and uh, and puckered surroundings it, even on that it looks a lot like a cancer doesn't cancer, it yeah. yeah um this is another view of so on the 2d these are this is a diverticular mm. um, structure or segment of the sigmoid colon difficult to see but you can still see that's this stalk and this is a polyp on the right yeah this uh, fly through view you can see quite nicely this is the same um patient and you can see there is a polyp on the fold Mm -hmm. which is on the uh, snapshot view you can see that the disadvantages of 3d or 2d is uh, when you're doing 3d it's a large area of colon which is obscured behind the fold and if you're not careful you can miss a lesion behind the fold um so these are difficult lesions um if you look here, this is the part of the sigmoid colon. Um, if you're not careful, these flat lesions sometimes are easily 
walk past if you're not careful. But if if you if you're looking for it, then it's quite obvious. Yeah, and that's in the um, fly through view. Yeah. Uh, this is just the optical colonoscopy view uh, of a flat lesion, which is challenged for I think yeah. colonoscopy. Yeah, you can easily go well. past that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so extraclonic, some examples of extraclonic findings. Uh, this you can see is a non-contrast low do imaging, just abnormal soft tissue in this area. And if you look on the coronal view or front to back view, there's a huge pelvic mass mm. which is taking the entire pelvis and part of the abdomen and this this is ovarian uh, lesion mm -hmm. what what is in store for us as um, uh, the CT colonos colonoscopy so I think it is going to go beyond just a failed colonoscopy mm. and a difficult patients uh, and patient choice maybe um, mm. so probably more and more images so I mean we've seen this with um, with ERCP and MRCP haven't we the ERCP mm. Um, an invasive thing which can have uh, significant morbidity and sometimes mortality was used for diagnosis. Mm. Magnetic resonance angiopancreatography comes along and now ERCP is only used for, yeah. for therapy. And so we may see the same, I suppose, in colonoscopy, that you, the colonoscopy is reserved for taking biopsies, doing polypectomy mm. and other therapeutic manoeuvres. And uh, you can see these like CAD or computerized added detection, which is already there. And we have got these softwares as well, where um, C or CAD can act as a second reader. So it highlights the areas uh, which could be a potential lesion. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is any small fecal residue or anything can be detected by this as well. And mm -hmm. that's why it needs us or second reader or first reader. Mm -hmm to look at these areas and either count or discount them. So, but that's that's quite promising as well. Uh, I think more of us need to be trained because the workload is going to get more and more. So um, we need more radiologists to be trained and, and, and start reporting well, these. Radiologists do most things nowadays, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> and this is a, a comparison of a CT colonoscopy and optical colonoscopy in polyp det detection. So here, if you look at this, the orange is the CT colonoscopy and green is optical standard colonoscopy. So less than five smaller polyps, clearly um, mm -hmm. optical colonoscopy is a lot better. But when it comes to the six to nine or more than 10 millimeter, the significant polyps uh, is not far from the optical colonoscopy. And so, so the smaller polyps, well, less than five, they're often mm -hmm. incidental probably yeah. never going to come to anything along and so but picking up significant pathology virtual colonoscopy is is, is looks very, pretty much equivalent yeah and this is where you you read the the fly through views of virtual colonoscopy view or the 2d 3d and again less than okay. five so the, the orange is 3d the greens 2d 2d that's yeah. correct yeah so you can see less than five or smaller polyps 2d is better and uh, and uh, six to nine or more than 10 millimeter. And again, not much difference, but it, it all depends how you report and how mm. how comfortable you are with whichever way. Yeah. And uh, and you will be better with that. Yeah. So all radiology depends on the radiologist. A radiologist yeah. and, and your machine. Good. Well, um, thank you very much, Rajiv, for, uh, for a comprehensive and uh, fascinating review of CT colonography. Um, just for the take-home message, what uh, what do you think people should remember from the last few minutes? I think um, the that there is an alternate to optical colonoscopy, which is quite reliable to to do the investigation of the large bowel. With this, like any any other test for investigating large bowel, distension and cleansing at the moment seems to be the key, and it it will always be um, unless and until we get something which can minimize the bowel prep complete or completely avoid bowel mm. prep and still give the diagnosis. Then, then it will be much easier for the patients. Mm. Uh, you get extracolonic findings as well with mm. CT colonoscopy, much liked by the patient. Mm. So future so is bright. Less bowel prep, particularly useful in frail elderly people at the moment. Um, for also for incomplete colonoscopy. Yeah. And it's only going to grow and colonoscopy become more therapeutic than diagnostic Hopefully. in the longer run. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much again. And next time we're going to talk about some interesting cases of CT colonoscopy. 
with examples. Great. I can hardly wait. Thank you very much. Thank you, John.